much for joining this week's episode of the Farm One Podcast. My name is Ina Tubalaiha, and today I am joined by Rob Lang. I'm the CEO and founder of Farm One. And Michael Chin. I'm Vice President of Corporate Development. Thanks so much for joining today. How was your Christmas weekend? Oh man, it's pretty long. You know, being at, home, being at home, being forced to be at home and then being at home. Uh, but we had a good time and, and we cooked some nice stuff. We cooked um, this sort of quite elaborate pastry creation involving Beyond Sausage and uh, pastry. And if anyone watches The Great British Bake Off, it's one of the things they give the celebrity bake off contestants to do because it's really easy. So we did that and some, uh, some nice onion gravy and... Um, Gabby made some pretty good, but not a health food, uh, mashed potatoes. So, uh, you know, fair amount of like vegan butter and oil and garlic and but really, really nice. Um, so yeah, like sort of recovering from that. Um, yeah, that was, that was my weekend. What about you, Michael? Uh, it was pretty low key comparatively to what you did. We started working on an eight pound ham for two people. Uh, we might be eating ham for the next probably 60 or 70 months, but that's okay because it was delicious uh, and, and made for an excellent Christmas. How about you, Ina? I had a weekend full of lots of sleep. I just came back from my trip from Tanzania last earlier last week, and I'm still experiencing a lot of jet lag. So I really didn't make a lot of elaborate meals. It was very basic meals for my misfits, misfits box. And I spent a lot of time lounging and watching the Nutcracker um, ballet. I, I used to dance ballet for a really long time. And so this season is always nice to connect back into my ballet history. Nice, nice. I actually just remembered another dish that I made that I wanted to mention because it was cool. Actually, I didn't really make most of it. It was, um, so our friends uh, at Rawson Treats, which is a, a raw food um, pastries and they do some savory stuff as well. They're located on the Lower East Side on Orchard Street. Um, and they, uh, I got from them uh, this raw Thai curry, which is really interesting. It's using kelp noodles, uh, some fresh avocado in there, fresh uh, bell peppers as well. Um, amazing taste and this sort of vibrant blue color, which I think sort of comes from a spirulina kind of thing. Uh, I might be incorrect on the right kind of algae, but it, there's a blue color to that. Um, and, uh, that was just really, really fresh and really nice. So I garnished that with some Thai basil that we grew last week at farm one, a little bit of mitzvah, uh, and some lemon gem marigold flowers. And it was beautiful and it was too dark to take a pretty photo, but that happened anyway. So check them out if you're looking for raw, um, really, really delicious, organic, uh, plant-based, uh, desserts and, and savory stuff. Uh, you can get them even on Grubhub or Seamless if you're too cool for Grubhub. <laughs> they sounds ship like a nation. beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah, they it, it's it is beautiful, and as you were about to say, Michael, it, they do ship nationwide as well. Um, so you can get them almost anywhere. Yeah, I ordered a black sesame pie. We're saving that one for New Year's. Don't wait too long. It's good. It's good. They ship frozen, by the way, if you're wondering how you ship this raw pie. It ships frozen. So you can actually keep it for weeks and weeks in the fridge, in the freezer. Um, but they won't last like that long because they taste really good. Awesome. Well, thank, thanks so much for sharing your Christmas festivities with us. Um, so because we have a short week at the farm and it's also a light news week, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different for this week's podcast. We're actually going to be doing a food, ag tech, vertical farming trivia with each other. So what each of us have done is we've actually prepared a couple of trivia questions that we're going to be asking each other to see how much each of us know about the food and vertical farming industry. Um, we're going to be having six rounds of these trivia questions, and each round is going to have three questions. We're going to do it round robin style, so we're all going to have an opportunity to ask trivia questions to another team member. 
I'm already you confused, but you can do it. You can lead <laughs> us through. You can do it. I'm excited. I, I want to prove to you guys that I know everything about this industry, but let's <laughs> see what happens. I might be, might be caught out. I'm really nervous because I don't want to, I don't want to, there's, I don't want to be in a situation where I don't know something, but we'll see, we'll see what <laughs> well, happens. Thanks. thanks for being vulnerable and sharing that. that moment. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So the first round, I'm going to be asking Michael questions, Michael, the, the trivia questions. So I'm, I'm going to actually just share my screen. Oh, we've got a proper presentation. Huh? Okay. Let's see. Can you all see my screen? <laughs> yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Oh man. So Michael, what is the most stolen crop in the world? of these four options, cheese, tobacco, olives, or grapes? Oh, I feel like there should be a bicycle or something, maybe a Honda Accord. <laughs> 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 yeah, they don't grow on trees. No. Oh, oh man. This... Well, is cheese a crop? No, right? Is it? No. But so, why, why would she have put it in there if it wasn't a crop? Do you think it's just a terrible item mistake? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, she's just trying to mess with my mind. But maybe because of that, that is the one that's the most stolen. Although, I don't know. Cheese maybe isn't eaten in that many places in the world. Fuck it. That's out. Mm -hmm. uh, so that leaves tobacco, olives, and grapes. I mean, tobacco, hmm. That's got to be dying, right? Or maybe not. Maybe it's just in certain parts of the world where we don't consume as much tobacco anymore. Olives, uh, definitely not in Asia. So let's strike that out. So maybe it's grapes. I'm going to go with tobacco. Can I, can I, buy, can I try one? If, yes. I don't know what happens if I, I guess cheese. I don't think it's a crop, but I think it's cheese. It is Duh. cheese. Oh. Oh. Okay. Cheese. Yeah. Oh, technicality. Especially in, in Europe where there's a lot of rare cheeses and cheeses that have to curate for a really long period of time. Um, mm. the, there's a lot of um, stolen crops of cheese because they, they want to take advantage of the expensive cheeses. Mm -hmm. Do they steal the cheese right off the tree where it's harvested from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also <laughs> suspicious about calling it a crop, but I get it. I get it. Although yeah. I was also thinking, Michael, that I think the olives, um, I think you might start to see more olives around the world as well. Certainly, obviously, mm. we're seeing more grapes in China now, right, for wine, uh, wine grapes. And I would expect you'll see some olive production there in the next sort of 20 years as the market matures and as maybe also climate change pushes some some mm. regions to make it more difficult but yeah interesting but i don't think people are stealing a lot of olives as far as i know other than uh kangaroos and cockatoos exactly <laughs> well the kangaroos knock over the trees and the cockatoos eat the olives this is a personal experience of my family so that's why we bring it up um <laughs> amazing all right what's next dinah next oh, man, question this is tough okay what are the three most commonly consumed vegetables in the American in American consumers? Okay, so for those of you that aren't on YouTube, A, carrots, tomatoes, and onions. B, potatoes, tomatoes, and onions. C, lettuce, potatoes, and carrots. And D, lettuce, broccoli, and potatoes. Sounds like my uh, school lunches, you know. <laughs> Hmm. Mm. Mm. Potatoes. Well, French fries are probably the most consumed thing on this oh, on this terrible, list, right? So that would or eliminate maybe. A. That would eliminate A. No one's eating broccoli in America. I mean, I eat broccoli every night, but love broccoli. Yeah, everyone that I that I tell that you know I, I eat broccoli every night. They're like. I mean, how many people are you telling? Are you telling people on the bus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a large sample size. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to strike D. 
Hmm. I don't think leafy greens are. I just don't. Although yeah. a lot of people eat salads. Ugh. Is it by I mean, is it by weight? I know though, or, um, or just by frequency of having that vegetable. By frequency hmm. of having that vegetable. I'm gonna go with B: potatoes, tomatoes, and onions. Wait, I, hold on, Rob. What's your guess? I think you're right, man. I think it is B, but let's say, let's say, because no, there's no way that carrots are going to beat potatoes, is it? But it's not. It's not possible, right? So it's French fries. It's tomatoes in pasta sauce, right? Yeah, you're right. It's B. I agree. It's B. It's B. Potatoes, tomatoes, uh, and onions. Uh, Yes. yes. You're right. You're right. Yes. And it was exactly that. It was French fries and pasta and pizza sauce. Why oh. potatoes and tomatoes are the top two most mm -hmm. commonly consumed vegetables. Onions, I was actually surprised to see in the top three. But just so you do know, broccoli is in the top 10. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> that's just you... because between that's just between you and Michael, though. <laughs> yeah. We're consuming all of them. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you cook everyone. in an instant pot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Good. What's next? All right. Third question. What three states in the U.S. produce the most food? A, California, Texas, and Illinois. B, California, Texas, Nebraska. C, California, Iowa, Nebraska or D, California, Texas, and Kansas. Obviously, California is in all of the options because we just know that California is the top producer. Um, can I ask another technical clarifying question? Wait, is, it, it's, is it by weight or is it some other measure? This is actually by pounds, yes. This is mm. by pounds. Okay. Mm. Mm. See, well, I want to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to eliminate Texas. Although they grow a lot of beef in Texas, don't they? Well, there's also a lot of uh, field farming as well. A lot like of what? Field farming for leafy greens as well. In Texas? Yeah. Hmm. It's also hot there a lot of the year. <laughs> isn't it? I do know that Texas is one of the largest producers of cotton in the world um can't eat it though you can't eat it it's funny that nebraska appears twice i would i wouldn't have i wouldn't have called it but maybe it's just my ignorance. what do they grow in nebraska corn they do grow a lot of corn in nebraska right i don't know I, i'm going to see california iowa nebraska i don't know why i just think texas is i'm gonna go be there Although, hold on, Iowa. <laughs> so it's really between Texas and Iowa. What do I know about Iowa other than that's where they do the first vote for the presidential election? I'm so ignorant. I don't know anything about Iowa shit. Iowa facts. <laughs> I'm going to do some research. I'm so ashamed. Ah. Uh, okay, you're going with B, Rob? Yeah. Texas. Ugh. All right, I'm going with C. Uh, uh, yes. Damn it. Okay. California, what is it? Iowa, and Nebraska. Is Iowa just corn? Yes, um, and lots of yeah. beans and peas. Same oh. with Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, soybeans probably. Yes. Yes. Well, is it food? Is it food for livestock or is it food for humans? Both. Both. Okay, I'm not gonna check. The right. the ones the ones that aren't used for humans are then ended up they, they do end up for livestock. It's a lot of tofu, I guess. All right. <laughs> okay, great. All right, okay. so that's round one. Amazing. Round two, um, Michael is it's your turn to ask the trivia questions for Rob. Okay, hold on. Cue music. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm not as prepared as Ina as usual. So I'm just gonna read this, okay? Yeah, okay. This is gonna be hard. This is gonna be so hard for you. Are you ready? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Okay, okay. What's the difference between soy sauce and tamari? 
Um, well, tomorrow's gluten free. I should really know this. I, oh man, I mean, I, 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 in a succinct way, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You are right with gluten free. Yeah, but why is it gluten free? It has no wheat. It has no wheat. Okay. Soy sauce has some wheat, apparently. So tamari is a wider class of soy sauces made with uh, uh, no or very little uh, wheat. It is darker in color and richer in flavor. Yeah. It's often yeah. used as a yeah. dipping sauce. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, so I had no idea soy, before this. Soy sauce is tamari, and tamar but tamari is not soy sauce? Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure about Not that. Not sure. Yeah, I wonder. Could you have a wheat-free soy sauce without it being tamari? <gasps> yeah. All right. I don't yeah. know. This went too deep. All right, I'm gonna have to do more research. <laughs> in addition to Iowa. All right, Rob. These next two maybe a bit more in your comfort zone. What is the main ingredient in mince pie? Um, well, you've got the sort of um, raisins and sultanas and. I mean, could I just say raisins? What do you call that? It's like a sweet mix of um, dried fruit. It's called mince meat, apparently. But that's exactly it. Yeah. It's a mixture yeah. of dried fruits and spices called mince meat. Why do they call it mince meat? I don't know. I, again, it's another thing I don't know. It's obviously a sort of um, British phrase from about 250 years ago or something like that. Um, and it turned into it. I, yeah, we'll have to look up the origins of that. But, but yeah, mince pies. It's not something I haven't had this year or probably last year either, but very common uh, in my household growing up. Mostly bought from Marks and Spencers if we were... No, not Marks and Spencers. That would have been too... Uh, we would have missed that. Probably um, Waitrose if we wanted to be fancy or Sainsbury's if we just wanted to be regular. Yeah, bit of UK... <laughs> UK supermarket hierarchy there. So, I've never had a minced pie. You know, are you missing something? Are you missing a grand <laughs> culinary adventure? No, you're not. Okay. Um, would it be worth having if you happen to be in the UK around Christmas time? Sure. Yeah, they're quite fun. Um, but uh, yeah, you're not going to walk away from one being chopped. I think they're okay. All, they're okay. Apparently a Christmas tradition in Australia, maybe New Zealand, as is this. Apparently its origins are disputed uh, between Australia and New Zealand. What's the name of the traditional Christmas Christmas dessert in Australia? Traditional Christmas dessert? Oh, I don't know. I'm so confused now. Uh, pavlova or is it lamington? It's pavlova. The way your face says, is it? I think it's Pavlova. <laughs> it's named after Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. Yeah, Pavlova. So um, it's a soft meringue uh, body, I guess, with a hard meringue top, and then normally a bunch of tropical fruits and stuff on top. It's really nice. You can make a, a vegan version very easily with Akapava if you're sort of careful. And um, yeah, you can do it. Um, but yeah, we, we would often have it with like uh, passion fruit um, drizzled all over the top and then mango. And, oh, it's, oh, it's beautiful. It's great. You can have it any time of year though. You don't need to wait till Christmas. I was, it's not a Christmas. I, yeah, I, don't, I didn't really know it was specifically a Christmas thing, but yeah, we'll, we have it quite often um, in my family's house. Very nice. Yeah, good. Happy questions. You, get, you got potatoes, onions, and tomatoes. I got... <laughs> I got pavlova and mince pies. It's great. I'll take it anytime. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so nervous now because I didn't know anything about those past three questions. Oh, I got okay. some tough ones for you. I know. I got oh, some tough ones. Okay. Round three. You had to call Rob. a friend. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. These are the audio only as well. I haven't written them down, but that makes them more special. So we're going to go with question number one, uh, Blue, Apron, Blue, Blue Apron, the meal kit delivery service. I think you're familiar with them, right, Ina? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Uh, at the time of recording, their market cap, the valuation of the company on the public market uh, is currently $108 million at the time of recording. 
What was their private market valuation in 2015 before they IPO'd? Was it A, $250 million, B, $750 million, or C, $2 billion? It's currently $108 million. Can you repeat the options once more? Absolutely. A, $250 million, B, $750 million, or C, $2 billion. I wouldn't say C. I wouldn't think that it would be that. It would be $2 billion. So I, I'm going to go between either A or B. Well, you can't. You've got to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> a and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mathematically. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with A. You're going to go with $250 million. So you think that they were valued at $250 million in 2015, and now they're worth only $180 Yes. Wow. Well, I'm afraid you're wrong because it was C. It was two billion dollars in two in 2015. Blue Apron raised money privately at a valuation of two billion dollars, and now they are down to 108 million dollars. So pretty catastrophic drop. Uh, I'm sure that that whole team is working really hard, and I, you know, I know that the pandemic has sort of gave them a little boost, but not really that much. Um, but yeah, quite a colossal drop in valuation there for Blue Apron. That broke my heart a little bit. Yeah, and you didn't get the question right either. So it's a double <laughs> <wave>. <laughs> it's a double break, double heartbreak. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Second question. In July 2018, Crop One Holdings claimed to be building the world's largest vertical farm in collaboration with Emirates Flight Catering in Dubai. Two and a half years later. In December 2020, how big is this farm in square feet? Is it 130,000 square feet or zero square feet? Zero square feet? It is zero square feet. They've made no, no progress and no announcements since July 2018. <laughs> That's a little bit of insight into the world of vertical farming there. Yeah, it's uh, hard, and hard to build a vertical farm. <laughs> it is very hard. It's very hard. Um, okay. The next question, I think, is a little bit easier. Um, which flower does the spice saffron come from? Is it A, orchid? Is it B, crocus? C, nasturtium? D, poppy? Which flower does the spice saffron come from? Nasturtium or poppy is where I'm leaning towards. I'm going to have to push you for time. Poppy. It is not poppy, I'm afraid. It's crocus. Oh, well, I wasn't even, my, my, when I narrowed it down, I wasn't even right then, so. I know, it's not a good showing for you, Ina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you are interested in getting saffron, I was trying to look around for this link before the show. Um, RumiSpice.com uh, is an ethical source of saffron. I'm pretty sure our friends at Burlap and Barrel must do some saffron as well, mustn't they? I'm going to look it up really fast or not as fast as I thought I was going to look it up. I don't know. I would have thought they would know where to get some saffron as well. But Ruby Spice, if you are in doubt, um, it comes from the crocus. It's a, a very labor intensive and crop intensive um, crop to harvest in that there's very few strands of saffron saffron that come from the crocus um and yeah so that's why it's so uh expensive and i think that might be the end of my questions um uh, for you Ina. you scored one <laughs> i got one out of three you got one you did get one one out of three great job i'm to get him back i know <laughs> yeah you have to get me back um, who are we moving on to now? Ina Ask Rob is next on the schedule. Yes. Okay, come on, bring it on. Bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, more we'll screen share. All right. All right. What country produces the most amount of food? The United States, China, India, or Brazil? Man. So hard to guess at this one. Produces, produces the most amount of food. Produces, produces. Oh boy, I don't know. Like you think, because you think Brazil and you think cattle, right? 
you think India and you think, I mean, I guess a huge amount of different crops, but rice and, you know, all kinds of legumes and stuff. And then China, obviously all kinds of crops as well. But then America does, the United States does produce a huge amount of food, doesn't it? And actually, I mean, I remember living in Japan and you could get, you'd see on the shelves, like American beef getting shipped over to Japan. Um, I don't know. I feel like whichever one I pick, I'm going to look silly. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just going to go China. B. Oh, not sure. B. China. Oh hey. yes, it's highlighted in yellow. Are there any? Is there any supporting information that our listeners um, are going to enjoy discovering about this question? China is actually the one that produces the most food, exports and imports the most food. Um, hmm. India is number two, and then you, the United States is the third largest producer of, of food. So it's, they're, they're all in the top three. Okay, except for Brazil, right. which is not in the top three. <laughs> not in the top three. All right, okay. next question. Oh boy. This one's kind of a sad one. How many pounds of food are wasted each year in America? 8 million pounds, 8 billion pounds, 80 million pounds, or 80 billion pounds? All right. Well, this feels like a Microsoft interview question, doesn't it? Like this thing where you should be able to work it out based on, you know, numbers in your head. So the population of the U.S. is roughly, what, 320 million, which if you said that everybody wasted a quarter of a pound of food, then it would be C every year. Is my math correct? Uh, which doesn't seem to be likely, does it? So what if everybody wasted 40 pounds of food a year? That would seem to be maybe, um, maybe okay, but would we waste four? No, my math is wrong. <laughs> How do I get to 8 billion? It can't be 8 billion. It can't be. <laughs> Can it be? That's too much. 8 billion pounds? 8 billion pounds. It probably is, isn't it? Because it's not the smallest one. It's not the biggest one. I think it's B. You think it's B, 8 billion pounds? I think so. All of our ah. are gonna break. 80 billion pounds. Okay. Oh, that's horrifying. So if we divide 80 billion by 320 million, what do we get? I'm going to do it. Eight. Oh, this is, I can't do this math. Even on the calculator. How many zeros in a billion? <laughs> Nine. Nine. Is it? Nine. Yeah. Seven, six in a million. Oh, the calculator doesn't go up that far. Does it do the E oh and then the thing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not going to do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this, the statistic it's that I've seen... 266 pounds per person per year, roughly. That's, that that's wasted? I think so. I just did that bad math on my calculator. It's probably wrong. Sorry, what were you going to say? The statistic that I've seen is that 40% goes to waste. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The problem is I don't know the denominator. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> it's useless. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was a question. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, last question. Oh, boy. What vertical farm raised the most money in investments in 2020? Plenty, Arrow Farms, Fright Farms, or Bowery Farming? I think it's plenty and that it was a follow on from including SoftBank. I, I, I think it must be plenty, even though Bowery did do a big raise. Um, I'll say A, my fallback option is D, Bowery, but it, I don't think it's either of the other folks. You were yes, right. Plenty. And it was exactly that. It was, it was the inclusion of, of SoftBank that um, that's why they raised, were able to raise so much money this year. Well, congratulations to Plenty. That what they they win the biggest prize of all. Lots of money. Uh, let's see what they do with it. Great. All right. Good questions, Ina.
All right, so round five, um, Rob, it's your turn to ask Michael. Oh, great, great, okay. Oh, okay, shit. Where did spam originate? Where did spam originate? And the options are A, Hawaii, B, Minnesota, C, California, D, Iowa. <sighs> Here's the problem. Yeah. I actually like spam. That I is ate a problem. lot of it. Yeah, I ate a lot of it growing up. So it's kind of like a little bit of comfort food. So they eat a lot of spam in Hawaii, but I don't think it's from there. I don't think it's from California. So it's Minnesota and Iowa. Where do they grow pigs? I'm going to go with Minnesota. That feels, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I think that was it. a solid choice given the pig farming uh, sort of heritage of that part of the country. Way. Very good. Hawaii, obviously a trick question there. Very popular yeah. in Hawaii and Okinawa, uh, but not from there. Good. Spam is right. also very popular in the Philippines. Spam fries, particularly. Yeah. Anywhere oh, with a so lot good. of uh, US Navy bases and uh, <laughs> Air Force bases and stuff. It's like, yeah. We call it luncheon meat where I'm from. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on swiftly. What crop, what crop produces the most cash for American farmers, apart from cheese? Uh, corn, <laughs> is it A, corn, B, potatoes, C, wheat, or D, apples? Ah, <laughs> oh, apples. <laughs> That's a cute, cute idea that everyone's making. Money off apples. Yeah. 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 It's uh, big in the American diet. Well, I don't think it's apples. I'm going to rule that out. Um, corn, potatoes, or wheat? I feel like potatoes. I think corn is probably i feel like corn is the one that you always hear about because they get all the subsidies they make it into pretend fuel for your cars and that type of thing um yeah, it seems like the obvious choice doesn't it yeah what like is it wheat or corn stop throwing me <laughs> off my defenses are up i'm gonna go with corn Hey. It's cheese. Oh, it is corn. <laughs> hey, it's a C corn. Word. You got it. Oh, two out of three. It's corn. Yeah. Oh, that makes I sense. Rob. Yeah. That makes sense. But do you know what wheat is? How, how big wheat is? Wheat's got to be pretty big, right? Yeah, it could be above your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Move along. <laughs> move along. What pH range is ideal for most crops? Oh, that's a controversial one. I want to say I didn't come up with this question. <laughs> uh, is it A, three to four, B, four to five, C, six to seven, or D, seven to eight? Maybe it's I'd like to phone a friend, Justin Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Well, you always hear about needing acidic either soil or water slightly acidic right because of the uptake of nutrients but three to four or four to five feels it's, like it's, you might burn your acidic, eyeballs right yeah yeah, yeah just sticking them in the ground yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm going with c six to seven yes very good, very good. Right. three wow michael in the lead here Amazing. Very impressive. Okay. All right. All right. Final round. Michael, it's your turn to ask questions for me. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. I might have some bonus questions for you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. First question. This is going to be, I don't know. Maybe it's easy. Anyway, name the two states where coffee is grown commercially in the United States? Florida. And uh, Texas. Why choose, why those two states? Oh, why those two? Explain your um, thinking. Because <laughs> it's really hot there. Um, 
there's already a big presence of agriculture there. That's pretty much where I, that's, that's how I came to those two states. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons are, are fair. It's a lot of agriculture. So one of them is California. Oh. Um, and the other, I'll give you another guess. What do you think the other is? There's a really well-known type of coffee that comes from there. Seattle? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tough place to grow that's, coffee. That's a it? good guess, though. That's a good guess. I mean, Starbucks I is. I would not. Place. I would not grow coffee there, though. <laughs> I, but when you say coffee, I think about like you know Seattle and like Stumptown and you know Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really well known. It's pretty expensive to get on the mainland oh. or anywhere else. Oh. It's I don't Kauai. Know. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Kona coffee, I'm guessing. Oh, is yeah. What... <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Um, okay. Um, what city is home to the oldest known continuously operating Chinese restaurant in the United States? I'm going to give you a few options. Okay. okay. New York City. There's some good Chinese places, you know, the Namwa and all of that. It's like been around a while. Butte, Montana, right? Long history there too. San Francisco, maybe Moscow, Idaho, or or Boston, Massachusetts. My guess is San Francisco because of immigration patterns and um, Asian American or Asians immigrated from the West Coast first before they migrated to the East Coast or Central America central, you know, mainland. So I would say San Francisco. It seems to make logical sense, doesn't it? And in fact, the oldest, the first recorded Chinese restaurant was in San Francisco, but it's no longer operating. The oldest operating oh. Chinese restaurant in the country is in Butte, Montana. Of course, wow. my favorite city. <laughs> so it's called the Peking Noodle Parlor. It was built in 1909 um, and continues to be operated till today. Wow. wow. I'm just yeah. checking it out uh, on, uh, on the old internet. And um, it's not a very striking looking restaurant, I gotta <laughs> say. It's, it's an authentic Chinese American restaurant. That's what that is. Yeah, it has, it has little private booths, though. So mm -hmm. uh, you can have some privacy for your family there. Uh, but very, yeah, very sort of, um, what should I say, without being rude, very uh, minimal tech, yeah. I would say. Yeah. I think it was CBS did a story on it this year. Um, and they were talking about those booths and, and social distancing. Okay, last question. What is a calamansi? It's a lime. Uh, like it's like a very small citrus fruit. Um, kind of looks like a small lime. And Ida closes out strong. That's correct. Like oh, thank you for setting that one up. <laughs> Those questions were between... tough. Those are tough. <laughs> it's a cross between a mandarin orange and a kumquat. Oh, wow. I didn't know that it was actually a kumquat was in there. Maybe we should start growing them. Yeah, next to the uh, jackfruit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, so, that concludes our trivia game. All right. So probably Michael wins that, right? Like, what's the, what's the scores? Do we have to tally them up? I feel like I can't remember what I got. You got the so... I think I got two out of three in the first round. You got two out of three in the second round. Okay. <laughs> well, we have to figure this out. I, know. I lost it. <laughs> we failed. Nobody kept score. I know. Okay. I know. Wait, I think we can get it. So I got two out of three. But did I get two out of three both times? I don't know. I think I did. I think I got four out of six. And then, and then 
Michael, I think you got five out of six, right? And then I yeah. you got like three. I got two six. out of six. Two. Oh man, yeah. your questions are quite hard then. So they were hard. All right. So with that, I mean, what's what are the prizes then? High five. <laughs> oh, high five. It's such a 2020 high uh, 2020 prize, isn't it? You know, the virtual <laughs> high five. That isn't even a high five. It's not even as good as a regular high five. Yeah. You know, okay. Satisfying smack. <laughs> All right. And then, but then there's a final piece to this, right? I know you're going to- There is. Give, okay, let's do it. Yes. So um, this next game is called Mad Gab. So the objective of this game is to guess the phrase. I'm going to present a set of words on the screen and it's going to look like gibberish. And between Rob and Michael, because I already, because I already created the phrases, I'm not going to play, but between Rob and Michael, you have to guess what the phrase is. They're all food related. Um, the hint of this game is to trust your ears and not the actual words because your eyes are going to play tricks on you with the actual words the okay. first person to guess each um the first person to guess each phrase wins that wins that round so there's five rounds we're going to start uh, off easy are you ready okay yeah i feel given that michael and i have already hit, discussed his dyslexia I don't know if this is like an advantage to him or not. We're going to pick, we're going to see, we're going to see. Okay. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. Ham and yes. cheese. Yes, ham and cheese. Okay, okay. Michael got that one. Chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookies. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is going a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> Man. Yes, chocolate chip cookies. That one threw me off. I was like, what? is this <laughs> just so that everyone who's listening knows yeah. it was jock j-o-c-k lit l-i-t jip j-i-p goo j-o-o keys k-e-y-s yeah okay <laughs> all right or a blob i saw a butterfly the third, the all right third one is coming in i said i Rice. Rice. Rice, rice, and and rice, rice and gravy. Yes, Michael. What, what is rice, rice and gravy? That's not a dish. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a no. Rice and rice. gravy. Oh, I'll have some rice and gravy, please. Yeah. <laughs> so that's rise, R I S E, Han, H A N, Cray, C R A Y, free, F. R E E, rice and gravy. Okay. Okay. All right. Fourth one. Apple juice. Apple juice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> ap apple juice. <laughs> did you make oh, these up? <laughs> Where did you get these from? <laughs> I did not make these up. <laughs> these are official, Michael. They're official. Have Don't question. Mad them. Gab. <laughs> oh my Don't god. question. All right. Last. Last one. A bud, a bud, a bud, a bottle of Coke. Yes, <laughs> a bottle of Coke. Come on. Uh, the uh, words say so Abe hard. Odd Hole lo, Luck Oak. A bottle of Coke. Coke. That's wow. not food. That's not food. It's not food, is it? Really, it should be stricken from the record. <laughs> oh, those were hard. Oh, that was hard. I quite like those. I could do those instead of work. That'd be good. Yeah, give me more. Mad I don't. Gab all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, game's called Mad Gab. Mad Gab, yes, Mad Gab, and it's um, it's a card game. So the in the real game, you have to do as many as you can in a in a timed in a lot of time. So I feel like Rob would be a good teammate for that game. I do quite, if I've got the right partner, I'm pretty good with Gabby at those kinds of things. Like if we can come into the right situation and there's like a heads up situation or something, we're pretty good. So I just want to say I came in with some form on this one. 
but <laughs> but maybe still i guess we should we officially say that you've won though michael this this year's quiz i think it does seem like you have yeah take um, the word. yeah okay then you do get a virtual high five unlimited hey. virtual high five. well i'll share it with you guys how's that since we're in a pandemic oh thank you so much it's the sharing economy you have to share <laughs> even if it's you a don't closed loop yeah exactly uh circular economy um well that's probably that then isn't it i think we we is i know that is there anything else on the agenda i don't think so right no that was a lot of fun though i had a, lot, that was, I had a good time that was officially fun. that was good i'm really glad we did it um and uh we'll be back um uh, i suppose next week won't we i don't know what the filming situation is going to be we're a little bit up in the air with covid testing being on the farm trying to be safe trying to build out a new farm so many things can happen um but we will do a podcast of some kind um and i mean i know we'll probably wrap it up but for me i want to just say uh have a great end to the year um it's been great sort of talking to everybody who's a supporter of farm one this year and expect we expect more more support next year as well. Um, but yeah, there's lots of exciting things to be coming in, in 2021. I, speaking personally, 2020, you know, it's been, I mean, I think, you know, most of us on the team have had it pretty lucky, I would say, but it's, you know, it's been a roller coaster ride for the company, certainly. Um, you know, definitely it'd be nice to have a little bit of a calmer, calmer year next year where we can sort of focus on, you know, growing food, giving it to people, making it that kind of thing that would be nice instead of all kinds of uh pandemic business although i'm sure it will take a few months for that to go away as well um but yeah in the meantime for me uh thank you for listening i'll pass it back over to Ina to to wrap it up with michael michael do you have any year-end messages that you'd like to share with our listeners well, first off, thank every thank you to everyone who's been uh, uh, who's supported Farm One, supported this podcast. It's a little bit new for us. Uh, it's been really fun. Um, I really, really enjoyed the conversations with Alicia from Urban Produce and and Russell uh, from Reverence. Um, so, Rob, I think uh, Terry Gross over at Fresh Air uh, may have a bit of competition, um, but that was really fun, and it's been really fun to do. Um, yeah, it's been been a pretty choppy ride for all of us. Um, and I know that there are a lot of people that are having a really hard time right now. Um, so, you know, just uh, try to look after yourselves and each other. Um, you can only believe that things are going to get better next year. And, um, you know, and uh, there, there's at least something up ahead. And for me, you know, I... I um, Thank you both, uh, Ina and Rob, uh, for uh, uh, everything that you've done this year with the with the company, and uh, to Jess and Justin, and um, you know everyone who was on the team when I joined in the summer. Um, you know, I hope you guys are able to r wrap up the year in, in, in a good place, uh, spending time with the people you care about. That seems to be the thing that matters the most right now. And uh, you know, come next year, uh, we'll do the, one of the most human things possible. Let's eat some food together. I'm really looking good. forward to that. I'm really looking forward to a meal together. Yeah, maybe some potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> and onions. <laughs> and onions. French fries. Yes. French fries. <laughs> maybe some cash corn in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for joining today. I had a lot of fun doing the trivia and playing these games. And I'm really looking forward to more of these episodes in the new year. Thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in and supporting our farm. And we're really looking forward to having, having you all back in the new year. Thanks so much. Bye.